You guys don't want me having gluten today. We got a lot done yesterday. Uh, basically did the whole swap and merge, got the car started in I'd say about nine hours tops, just because we took like a long lunch and we were chilling. I'm going to make myself a little burrito. Cheers. <laughs> Brian has a list on the, st on the stuff that we kind of got to look over and finish up, which is fixed alignment, fuel pump, radiator, AC lines, exhaust, dash, rear sway bar, air box, PS. Power steering. Power steering. Make sure shit's tight, yo. <laughs> So what's the first thing that we're gonna attack today? You're gonna go interior. Yeah, I'm gonna finish up the interior. You guys are gonna work on the radiator, mm -hmm. um, and then power steering bracket intake, and then we'll raise it up, we'll do the alignment, finish the exhaust, put your sway bar on. Okay. Yeah! Woo! Woo! You're looking mighty dashing today, Brian. Oh, I thank you, sir. Oh! I thank you, sir. So you're gonna try to find the hooks on the upper. It'll kind of slide when it finds it. There it oh, goes. there it oh, is. There's oh, it's happy. Now it found its spot. There we go. Perfect. All right. It's done. All right, let's go drive. All right, let's go. Radiator. Radiator. All right, so we have this radiator. Um, it's a thicker core. We just put these uh, high output fans on and it should be a lot better for clearance because we were having a little bit of a clearance issue, which we will no longer have. So we are going in with this. Yeah, look at that. I can actually fit my hand in there. Way better. High wire, Woo. radiator shroud. Woo. So invasive. So what we'll do is we'll have a little support that holds this hose out of the way. Yeah. So I had to make this little bracket for the coolant hose. Dude. Who's Apparently, Sawzall Frank is well diverse because now he's Sledgehammer Frank. <laughs> we need to bend the hose too. It, it, you got we gotta do both. This helped out a ton, but we gotta do both. Going. Is that? Going. Alright, that's good, that's good, that's good. We have to bend this a little bit here. Uh, so that it fits and clears that. They're old, so take your time and be careful. You may have to pull it back out if you break something. Or didn't realize how broken it was. He can't fix it. So what we have here is a, a typical problem in, in these RS. Um, this is the heater core box and this is the directional vent or I would say the directional vent dial. The cord connects here and then it stabilizes here which always cracks and gets so brittle. So all I'm doing is scuffing up the inside of this to create something for the epoxy to grab to. So if you look inside there, you can see how scuffed up and rough it is. Now what we're gonna do is we have some plastic welder. So basically what you do is you take this plastic welder, you put it inside here, you squeeze it in, and then we're gonna mix it up inside here, and then we're gonna cut this tip and we're gonna fill this whole pocket up with this epoxy. And then we're gonna take this clip that goes in here and we're gonna stick it inside there and it's gonna hold the clip in place while reinforcing 
this cracked plastic. Fill this up, stick it down in there. And just make sure that there's some clearance here for this. Now we're just going to put this in. Make sure we slide it in nice. Looking good. So we just want to make sure that it's nice and clear through here. Because that's where it has to feed through. And we're good. We're fixed. Look how sturdy. It's good. It's good. It's good. It's good. It's good. It's good. All right. So Brian wrapped up my interior. Everything's back in order. Um, we did have to fix that uh, vent switch, which we did. We did. We learned something today, and and despite having to take out the dash again. But that's the kind of stuff but, that happens. But that's the reality of doing a swap. You will probably have to do something like that. Maybe it's not the dash, but it's something else. Yep. Just give yourself enough time to do that. Yeah, expect it. Yeah. Um, so we're going to check the lights and everything right now. Right? Yeah, so we'll start with the blower. Let's check Bucky's fix. Whoa. Oh, yeah, yeah. Headlights are working. Left? Yep. Yeah, we're good. Wipers work? All works. Well, Do this before you put the car back together. Yeah. Yeah, that looks good. Now just do the bracket. We're gonna figure it out. You got that? Sounds good. Okay, so when you're adjusting these high rod ends, you wanna make sure to not twist the boot like this. What happens is when you spin this rod and that boot sticks, see how it's twisting it? It'll actually tear this. So what you wanna do is back it off and then get some lube or any kind of grease and put it inside this clamp so that it moves freely. And now it's spinning freely. Okay, so we're bolting up the exhaust and uh, manhand Frank here. <laughs> Fucking, he was taking off the heat shield and boom. This is actually something you guys want to check oh, two out. sensor. Well, you want to check this out because it's common for the bung to get messed up and you will never see it because of the heat shields. Yeah, so this was already on its last leg. You can see this little shiny spot right there. That's the part that was actually holding it on. But uh, man hands here, he found the problem. Hi guys, today we're gonna be doing fuel pumps. So Lance is just pulling out the old fuel pump because we have to replace it with a slightly bigger one. I don't want any trouble. I oh. down pipes. Special delivery. Time. Multitasking. Woo. Double fisted, baby. Uh. Yeah. Lance <laughs> likes to party. Uh. Uh. <laughs> this is what we're putting in. AM 340 is good. If you're keeping it stock, a Walbro 255 or a stock WX or STI, all of those are good options doesn't really matter as long as it's similar to stock WRX or STI. The key thing when you're doing a swap here, you want to keep the hanger from your RS or whatever your car is. The reason being that in 2002 on the newer cars, they separate the level sensor ground and the temp sensor ground. So if you put in the WRX entire assembly, you will lose your fuel level. So just swap the pump onto your original hanger and you're good to go. And just Twist around it. Well, now that Bucky's gone, what do we want to talk about? Did they talk about how he smells a little bit? All the tooting. Tooting. A lot of tooting. He doesn't care, I love it. I know, he doesn't care, though. Three. Two, three. <laughs> okay, easy. Now that we've removed the OEM fuel pump and put in the upgraded 340 AEM, pump into the stock GC hanger we're gonna drop it back in the tank the thing that's nice about this is really it's super simple to swap out and everything will plug in and bolt in the same watch the float when you put yeah, this yeah, in yeah, yeah. that's always a trick Lance will show you how to do it he's an expert well don't say that then you'll jinx me he's a spurt yeah yep make sure that the it moves freely once you got it in now the other trick too is there's a wiring harness right down here. You got to be very careful about not pinching that. There it goes. It's all 
also gonna make sure that that gasket um, between the hanger and the tank is in good shape. Ours was. Yes. But sometimes those things are old and rotten and they'll leak. Yep. So if you smell gas in your trunk area, that might be what's causing it. Also, don't go crazy torquing this down. Yes. You will snap the studs and then you're talking a new tank. It is not repairable. Small wrench, tight, just barely tight. Snug. Snug, I like that. So for the power steering reservoir, all I did was use the stock bracket and make the hole bigger. A little. And I just utilized the actual bolt for the bumper. Is all of that GD? This all GD. The power steering, power steering stuff. steering is all GD. Okay. But technically you could bolt all this GD stuff to your GC rack. So if you didn't do the rack, GD rack and you kept your GC rack, you could pull all of this stuff. So the power Just steering lines, the exact everything. exact same way we did it here. Okay, cool. Does not change. Look at this little toothpick. Little guy. Look at that little cute thing. It's honestly shocking. You guys are doing a great job. Freaking Lance. Fucking Lance. Bitch. You know how many freaking rock stars this guy has? Fucking Lance, bitch. Oh. Put it on. Oh boy, he's brave. <laughs> I guess I'm not getting that off later. <laughs> <laughs> it's, oh, it's totally it's, not it's cross fine. It's, fine. All. it's fine. Only thing left is to put some bolts on the downpipe and throw in the intercooler and then fill it with some fluid and we are good to go. Yeah, it's gonna be awesome. I'm excited to hear it and drive it. Sick, brah. Lance, you want some of this? Go for it, Lance. Nope. Come on, nope. Lance. You got nope. this. Nope. This all right, is all I'll you. trade you. Trade me. We do have some stuff in the way here. Oh. There you go. That's on. <laughs> Brian's about to fire it up. The car is finished. Everything. All right, so after this last startup, we noticed that it was, it kind of had like a little bit of a misfire. It sounded like probably like an injector sticking or something. And then once again, we realized, oh, we forgot the plug-in cylinder too. Yeah, that connector was busted. We repaired it and then moved on to something else expecting the next person was gonna handle it. Yeah, and then the next person and then yeah. the next person and then lo and behold. Here we are. We found it. Easy fix. Easy fix, so cylinder two, the fuel injector was not plugged in. Yeah! Eye yeah! wire build, number 1500. No whammy, no whammy, no whammy. Bam. It's official. Hey, um, Brian? Yes, Bucky. Can, can I drive it? Yes, you may! Yeah! <laughs> Woohoo! How's that clutch? <laughs> we are going on the first test drive. Excellent. So what do we care about on the first test drive? I guess we're just gonna pay attention to the gauges and uh, feel the clutch and listen for weird noises. Yeah. What about Lance, what do you think? Dude. Sending it, bro. Send it. Okay. We're gonna send so we have it. two different methodologies here. One, <laughs> obviously, send it. this is my car. <laughs> As obviously, send it would be uh, methodology one. <laughs> methodology two would be, hey, let's test some stuff out first. Yeah, realistically, joking aside, we're gonna listen for noises. We're gonna listen for how the car drives, you know, basic stuff like that. Clunks. Yeah, clunks. Looseness. Loose rattles, temperatures, lights. windows up, windows down, those yeah. kinds of things. Yep. All right, cool. Let's do it. What's that noise? It's got like a shh. Hey, what? Is that a <laughs> whirly boy? Yeah, what I think we got one of them little whirly boys in here now, boy. So, <laughs> what y'all thinking about that? Whirly boy. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so, we got a little bit of smoke, but that's typical on the swap. <laughs> yeah. Puff, puff fast, bro. Pickup feels good. Third gear. 
Yeah. So, so the cool part about this car, compared to like a US WRX, is we've got ABCS. And some people complain about the two liters low end. This will make that feel a lot better. The other yeah. thing is you have a JDM ECU. When you put in a little better octane, you're gonna find out what this thing's really capable of. And it's got two cats too. It feels really three. nice. That's right, three cats. The power is, uh, it's not laggy at all. It has really good torque. Feels like good linear, linear power. Yeah, it's linear. good linear. Yeah, it's, it's not a huge turbo, but you only got two liters. Plus you have that great gear ratio in this car. For well, that, for that trans, or for that engine. Truthfully, if you're comparing the USDM to the JDM motor, dude, the G USDM feels super doggy. This does not no, but feel doggy whatsoever. Between the ABCS and the tune factor, yeah, this is gonna be your biggest thing. I pull over, leave it running, pop the hood, give it a good look over, make sure nothing's loose. So oh, smoke show. <laughs> What is all this smoke coming from, Brian? Is this like the burn off from the Every, turbo? Everything. everything, yeah. So you've got a little bit of oil from the turbo. Well, you've got, go ahead. Honestly too, we did the valve covers as well. So when we pulled those valve covers off, it did dump oil into the heat shields. Yep. So this is going to be common. Yeah. Now if it burns for an excess of like five days, then go and take a look at it. Also look on the ground, make sure there's no dripping, but more than likely, this is gonna be common. Really common on this too is the power steering. This all comes apart and gets put back together. Inevitably, it leaks somewhere on the power steering side of things. That will burn off. Just give it time, it'll be fine. But that's why you wanna be careful because you don't want to fire. But make sure <laughs> so, you look underneath and check for leaks. Kind of a weird smell. So we just got back from putting some miles on the car. We had a lot of smoke coming from the heat shield area by the header. And we just took off the heat shield. There's nothing dripping. There's no seepage on the cradle. There's nothing. So the last thing I wanted to let people know is RSs work a little differently than WRXs in terms of the radiator fan. Only one will come on. There's a primary and a sub. The secondary is tied into the AC. So if your AC is not hooked up and not on, the second fan won't kick on. This is your primary fan. When it gets hot, this one will turn on. That one will not until you have AC going. Outside of that, it'll keep it cool. You're good to go. Thank you everyone for watching and tuning in. I hope you find these videos helpful in your swaps moving forward. And I wanna thank Brian and Lance for all the help they've given me. You guys have a good day. Phew. Brian doesn't like necessarily working on rusty shit, so we're just dusting it black for him. Just don't, don't tell him it's still rusty underneath, but shh. Oh, Brian. I appreciate good? that. Thank you.